Inside Michigan Football is presented by Meyer. Hi again, friends, and welcome to another edition of Inside Michigan Football. Doug Karsh alongside the two-time captain of the Wolverines, John Jansen. Michigan gets a win over Maryland in a game and a win that I think is going to age very well. Yeah, I think Maryland is going to surprise a lot of people this year, this year in the Big Ten, and it's also a win for Michigan where they left a lot on the field. A lot of opportunity, both sides of the ball, and a lot of corrections that can be made, and you always want to make those corrections in a win. Well, one of the biggest mistakes of the day was made on the opening kick, and it set up what might be the quickest touchdown in Michigan football history, but we saw them drop some kicks in the pregame, and it turned out that's exactly what happened in the game. Yeah, and all you want from, on, especially on a kickoff, is guys hustling downfield, to be in position to make a play, and it's exactly what happened for Michigan. First play, 10 yards out, J.J. McCarthy finds Scooney, Luke Schoonmaker, for a touchdown. Scooney had a great game this, this week. Number of catches, number of yards, both career games for him. Uh, but to be able to get in the end zone early on and probably the fastest touchdown in Michigan history. Later, Maryland would add a field goal. It was 7-3 Michigan. Wolverines got some good running early on from Blake Corum. Well, Blake Corum does a great job of being able to see the field, be able to feel where everybody's at. And when you have that vision, you have his ability and the patience. That's the one thing I think today and that we've seen from Blake Corum last week with the five touchdowns, today with two, 243 yards, is his patience of waiting for linemen to get in front of him. You pull that tackle, it takes a little bit of time. You got to have patience. He did a great job. Maryland would score a touchdown to make it 10-10. Let's go to the second quarter and we start Jansen Vision, third and five. Maryland threatening huge play by the Michigan defense. And we talked about this during the broadcast. We needed a stop at this point. Mozzie Smith, captain of the defense, and here's exactly what happens. You've got, when you line up here, third and one, you know that these three guys right here are supposed to block Mozzie Smith, defensive lineman, and then Michael Barrett in the backfield here. When Michael Barrett walks up, center sees him, he should come off, but there's no communication that, hey, I'm leaving Mozzie Smith, I'm gonna come across, and all of a sudden, you've got two guys blocking one, and that leaves Mozzie Smith all alone in the backfield to make a giant play. Now that play was set up and executed by Mozzie Smith, but Michael Barrett was really what made that play go. That forced a Maryland field goal, it was 13 to 10. Later in the first half, DJ Turner, our next Jansen Vision play, an outstanding play in the secondary. Yeah, and what happens here is, again, watch Michael Barrett. When you see him in the middle of this defense, he's gonna fill this zone right here. DJ Turner is coming over from here, and this is the receiver that he defends. He does a great job of forcing him, slowing him down as he comes up, and then as he comes across, you're gonna see DJ Turner slide in behind him, and make the play, but watch where this ball goes from the quarterback. And right here, you've got Michael Barrett coming across. He's gonna force Talia Tunga Bailoa to throw it just a little bit behind the receiver. And when that happens, that's what causes the interception. Great position. Again, Michael Barrett, right place, right time, causing a play. He doesn't get the credit, but he's the one that made the play. So Maryland led at 13-10, and they had the ball late in the first half and had some momentum when Michigan started to turn the tide with a big three and out, including a huge play by Mikey Sainristel. Well, Mikey Sainristel does a great job on this play. We talk about his aggressiveness. They line him up coming off the edge. Mikey Sainristel on this play does a great job. He identifies the wide receiver screen. All right, you know it's coming. You, what Mikey Sammer still does is plow through this block coming out from a tight end, a player that's much bigger than him, to, to defeat that block and make the play. And it's exactly what you got to get from a guy, again, captains making plays when you have to have it. So the Wolverines got it back. They had a huge fourth and one. And Blake Corum, everybody was thinking the ball was going up the middle. He bounced it outside. and. We've heard this before, got a big block from a wide receiver. Well, the question was, is it gonna be a quarterback sneak or what are they gonna do? Hey, line up, get set, get to the line of scrimmage. And Blake Corum, he, he makes it look like, and this probably was intended to go right up the middle. Just pick up the first down. But what he sees is this entire side of the defense get collapsed down. He's got one guy to beat and he is absolutely off to the races. And he does a great job. We talk about his vision. Nothing there, pop it out. Ronnie Bell, great block. And at that point, when, when Blake Corm gets into the open field, absolutely no one on that defense is going to catch him. Wolverines led at 17-13 at the half. We'll have second half highlights coming up. And also, 
This is former Wolverine hockey captain and newest Red Wing, Andrew Kopp. How did he help out Michigan football? Get ready for this game against Maryland this week. We'll show you later here on Inside Michigan Football. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest. Michigan led 17-13. At the half, welcome back to Inside Michigan Football, Doug Karsh and John Jansen. And the Wolverine defense really started to exert itself, and one guy in particular, Mike Morris, and this was a big play in this game. Yeah, we talked about they need to put pressure on, on the quarterback. They need to find a way to get him uncomfortable and get some hits on him, and this was the biggest hit of the game. When you watch Mike Morris here, he's going to come off the ball. This was about two seconds, one second before the ball was snapped, before the play clock goes off, and I want you to watch the left foot of this tackle. As he goes back, it's eventually going to go too far back. When he does that, it gives Mike Morris the short corner, and when he gets around, he does a great job of sticking his foot in the ground and going straight at the quarterback, and an outstanding job of Mike being able to put a hit on a quarterback that is legal, there's no targeting, there's no roughing, head is to the side. It was a terrific play. It was an incomplete pass, but Tunga Vailoa injured, had to sit out. Wolverine's got to stop there. Later, Mike Morris ran down Tunga Vailoa when he had a lot of green in front of him. Yeah, and you, when you watch this play and you watch Mike, he ends up on one side of, of the left hash. All of a sudden, hey, Tunga Vailoa escapes the pocket. And this, this, is, this play is all about hustle. He runs them down on the opposite side of the other hash, just gets them by the shoelace, but sometimes that's all you need. Go to the fourth quarter now, Michigan knocking on the door, and J.J. McCarthy hooks up with Roman Wilson on a 20-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, I mean, J.J. had so many different guys open, just seemed to be a little bit off, but when we needed him to get first downs, when we needed him to complete a pass, he was able to do it. Maryland scores a touchdown. They go for two to try and make it a three-point game. Mikey Sanger still comes up with a big play in the end zone. Mikey Sanger still is all over the place for this defense. He is the Swiss Army knife for this defense. They bring him off the edge. They make big plays down at the goal line. He is the guy that they're using in so many different ways, and it's fun to see him, see him play. Michigan up five, looking at a third and six, and J.J. McCarthy, who took deep shots all day and just couldn't connect, connects with Ronnie Bell in a huge play. This is where you know that you've got a quarterback with a lot of confidence. You miss time after time and then all of a sudden hey when it matters it's third and six you've got to have a first down you've got to have a big play he hits Ronnie Bell down the sidelines setting up another big play for Michigan and the Wolverines got a field goal out of that drive they led by eight Maryland gets the ball back and RJ Moten comes up big he came to Michigan as a football slash baseball player and he played center field on this one. Oh my goodness what a great interception this is an interception that you see on Sundays he tips the ball tips it to himself comes down it was anytime Michigan needed a play, they were able to come up with it. Now we need more of those, but when it mattered most, Michigan made plays. All right, third down and four, Michigan needing to move the chains and Blake Corum, they hand it off. You wanted to see him run it and they did and he bounces it outside again. Another huge play. No penetration on this play and Max Bredesen coming out of the backfield seal, seals off the backside and again it's the vision of Blake Corum to be able to pump it to the outside and once he gets in the open field, we said this in the first half, we're going to say it again in the second half, once he gets into the open field, no one's catching him. Maryland scores a late touchdown, makes a two-point conversion to make it a seven-point game. Onside kicks can be tricky, but Colson Loveland, the freshman tight end, made this look easy. Yeah, you already made one baseball reference. Hey, this is a shortstop field in the ground ball, does a great job, and seals the victory. So the Wolverines get the win in the Big Ten opener. Now it's time for our Al Rose Steel Man of the Week, and let's go to our Ed Kengerski. You, career-high 30 carries, career-high 200. 43 yards. I say those numbers, man. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel good, man. Uh, you know, I, I needed a day like this, um, and, I, and I prepared for a day like this. And uh, shout out to the O-line. They, I swear, you know, I say it every week, but they're so good at what they do. They make my job easy. And uh, it was a great day. The receivers were blocking their butts off, uh, just giving me holes and vision. And you know, the, coach, the coaches trusted me. Uh, they saw we could pound them and pound them, and that's what we did. When you carry the ball 30 times, do you feel sore now in the moment, or is it going to hit you a little later? It might hit me a little later, but uh, it may not hit me at all, you know. But uh, you, you know, uh, I, I can carry the ball 30 times, you know, and that's what that's why I prepared this off season for. That's why I put on some weight and things like that. So um, it, it was a great day. 
Michigan scored on six of 10 drives, but Corum said there's still plenty to work on. He said, I know it's asking a lot, but I want to score every single time, adding that he has faith in his teammates and his coaches to do so. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Ed Kingerski. Thank you, Ed. Coming up next, John Jansen talks with Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh. It was a dogfight. It was a dogfight early on, and I loved the way we responded. We, we were looking for some sort of adversity that was going to come, and I was really happy with the way we responded. Just so proud of, of us uh, and our whole team to fight through that um, and, and just to have that grit uh, and tenacity to, to keep on going. Um, I had no, no doubt that, that uh, we were going to get the job done. Today's conversation with Jim Harbaugh is brought to you by Meyer. Your initial thoughts on the win? I thought it was a great win. Uh, I mean, gritty as heck. The, uh, the guys were fighting all four quarters, and uh, you know, there's some momentum shifts, but uh, tremendous game by Blake Corn, my gosh. Uh, 240-some yards uh, and uh, great interceptions. DJ Turner made the, made the big play for us in the first half. R.J. Moten in the second. Um, and uh, we also got the, the big kickoff that Hibner recovered uh, to start the game. Uh, just a lot of really good play. I mean, uh, got the got the key stops when we needed them. Well, not only key stops, but fourth and one. Blake Horm goes for a touchdown. Third and four at the end of the game, he goes for another touchdown again. What did you see from him, and and how much of that was just him being able to make guys miss and see things out there that maybe nobody else would? Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, they were they went to big people. There was no depth to the defense, and uh, you know both of those short yardage plays. Turned into touchdowns. Uh, great job by by Blake Cena. I'm so proud of uh, uh, Gio El Hadi and um, and uh, Trent A. Jones. I mean, uh, four quarters of great football. Gio was uh, was tremendous. Um, just ask Ryan Hayes. I mean, uh, it was a great job by 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 those two. And there were some you know great plays. Uh, great plays. A lot of great plays. You know, it was uh, it was good football. We settled down. And just started you know playing. Um, Fundamental football, Michigan football, uh, felt like we we uh, were able to get ahead and stay ahead. There were times where Roman Wilson was open, Cornelius Johnson, and it just seemed like early on there was a, a step or two off. What type of adjustments or coaching points did you give J.J. going into that fourth quarter? I think this is the first time um, that J.J. has felt 100%, you know, and uh, – and we talked about that, and he was overleading some guys at times. But uh, you know, he's really had to, to crank it to get to to, to that. And now, at a, he feels. Told me this morning, he felt 100 percent, and felt that way. Uh, you know, I think he was just overthrew a couple. You know, so uh, get it recalibrated. Back to 100 percent, which is uh, <laughs> that's going to be good too. Yeah, nice time to be uh, going at, at 100 percent defensively early on. Struggled with the run. What type of adjustments did you guys make to be able to be better against the run in the second half? Well, you saw Mozzie Smith make some huge plays, and they're uh, getting off blocks. I think we've done a really good job uh, of doing that and and going lower too. I mean, that was a big back. It was it was hard tackling him up above the waist. Uh, you know, getting around the legs, um, hanging on. And, uh, and then waiting for the reinforcements to come because you know, tackling him up high was, uh, you know, he was, he was bleeding out some yards, you know, five yards, six yards on first down. It was, it was too much. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep, uh, keep uh, you know, something to get better at. There was uh, a lot of things to, to get better at and improve at. Um, but we got the win, and those are the best times to do it. All right, now you got four games at home, 4-0. and You go on the road to Iowa City. What's the message to the team about going on the road? Yeah, it's uh, you know another question the teams that got to answer. I mean, there's a uh, there's a there's a question every every uh, a lot of times every week, right? So uh, you know, win the next game, we'll get uh, do it the way we do it, the way we do it. Michigan football, win the next game, great week of preparation, and on to Iowa. Thanks, coaching. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a great test for us. It just as like a whole, because like a lot of us have been feeling it's been preseason. So this was our f first full four quarters. And I think uh, he's going to keep getting better and better. We, we, we see what we, we need to truly work on and what we got to face, what we got to get better on. So I think it'll be fun. We did a good job of just sticking together. Um, you know, we faced a little bit of adversity. Um, but just, you know, down the line, just cleaning up little things like communication, um, you know, expecting 
certain plays in different situations. So that'll just continue getting better. But overall, I feel like we did a good job handling our first Big Ten game. So, John, let's talk about the Michigan defense. Second and third quarter held Maryland off the scoreboard. Maryland's going to give people a lot of problems offensively, but guys like Mike Morris, Mozzie Smith, and the secondary really got it done. I thought the secondary played exceptional. There were times when, hey, the defensive line is not getting it done. They're not putting pressure on the quarterback. They're going to have to hold uh, in the secondary for longer than they really should or should have to. And they did an outstanding job of preventing Long plays, big plays from a team that has NFL talent at wide receiver. Roman Hemby was held to 48 yards on 16 carries. He'd been a problem all year. And this Michigan defense, I'm sure they're plays they'd like to have back, but ultimately they came up with some big plays. The R.J. Moten interception, the D.J. Turner interception. Sane Ristol, first real test for him on defense. He made a lot of plays. And Mozzie Smith making a play when you had to have it. It's, it's simply you got to make those plays, but you can make yourself, your life, a lot easier if you make more of them. He was a captain on the Michigan hockey team. Now he's a Detroit Red Wing and Ann Arbor native. Andrew Kopp helped the football team out this week. That story next on Inside Michigan Football. The win wall at Schembechler Hall will get updated this week as Michigan recorded the program's 980th all-time victory on Saturday. Michigan has won six straight against Maryland and improved its all-time Big Ten opening game record to 89-26-2. Andrew Kopp was a Michigan hockey captain. He's now with the Red Wings. And this week, he helped the Wolverines with their pump-up video prior to the game with Maryland. There is something about this day, this time of year, at this place. Hard to do much better than a college football Saturday. Ann Arbor, where it just feels like football. Where it feels like home. A place where you reunite with your closest friends. Where you meet with family and uphold traditions. We return here, one among 110,000 strong. Chasing familiar feelings and memories. Of a hit, of a touchdown, or the voices that echo after these moments. We meet here. The Michigan Band and Stadium Lights got us home on game day. What do we know concrete about Michigan? That this is a mature team that knows how to handle their business. We got something special. We got something brewing. Let's keep it going, right? Yes, sir. And when we arrive, it's with wide eyes and full hearts. Let's go. Let's go. We're just chasing perfection. We're just trying to stack days and continue to improve each week. And when we leave, we leave with empty lungs. We meet in the streets of Ann Arbor where it just feels like football. Where we've gathered so many times before. Keeping the same mindset every day, coming in every day, recommitting every time that you step into this building. Where Saturday morning is the best night of the week. One play at a time. Let's take it to these guys. Dominate, make them feel it. We the tip of the spear. It start with us, every play. Welcome back, and welcome home. So John, back in 97 when you guys won the national championship, do you remember the pump-up videos? We never really had any pump-up videos. What we would have is a highlight reel. So we'd watch a movie Friday night. After that, Phil Bromley, our video guy, would put together some of the highlights from the week before. And honestly, during that season, it was eight and four, eight and four, eight and four. M stands for mediocre. That's all we needed at that point. I know that was what motivated a lot of the guys last year. Pump up videos are sweet, though. Yeah, they are. And Michigan goes on the road for the first time this year and plays at Iowa. Join us next week here on Inside Michigan Football when we take a look back at the Wolverines and Hawkeyes. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest.